one, I'm a person of faith and um, I, I practice my religion. And I've realized that with everything happening around the world, um, people have such a wrong impression about Islam. And it makes me feel like our religion needs a huge PR campaign to tell people that we are the same. Faith does not separate us, it brings us together because every different faith is built on the same foundation. So, and I'm glad I'm here to speak about this because I do want to clarify any misconfusions or misunderstandings and give you a bit of my culture and it's like a cultural exchange. The thing is, uh, in Islam, we have a, a basic foundation. Now, how you practice your religion is up to you. You have the freedom to practice your religion however you want. I, I have Muslim friends who don't cover up their hair showing. They wear short things. So to us, you know, in our religion, we say your faith is yours and my faith is mine. So basically what it means is that I should not judge you and you should not judge me, you know? And the thing is, um, in Islam, we have people who look different, who dress different. And yet sometimes when you look at them, you won't even know that they're Muslim because faith is in the heart. And you should never judge people on how they look. To be honest with you, you cannot change the whole world and how they think, right? But what you can do, you can influence the people around you. And information is everywhere. If somebody just goes and just types in Islam and just reads about how beautiful our religion is and how it's very simple, they'll understand that it has nothing to do with violence. And we, we are against the violence that's happening. If you research the word Islam, um, Islam means in Arabic, peace. And um, the Prophet, uh, may God, uh, our Prophet Muhammad uh, used to say like, do not harm anybody around you. Do not interfere in anybody's life. Don't even look or judge and expect the same from others. And I like, there's a lot of stories about him being harmed by other people. There was time where people threw rocks at him and all he did was prayed for them, you know? And I'll give you another example. His, his, the Prophet's wife um, was a businesswoman and he used to work for her and he empowered her and he married her while working for her. So all this, all this uh, confusion about uh, Islam degrading women and not letting them work or do whatever they want to do, this is not true, you know? And if somebody looks deep inside, they realize that Islam is not, has nothing to do with, with harming others, judging others, or even like violence. We are so against violence, you know, even with animals. Um, now, the thing is, different countries, different cultures practice Islam differently. And then culture has an influence on religion. So you will see people who are Muslim acting differently in different cultures, different countries around the world. And this is not Islam, this is culture. So if people just separate culture from Islam and just read about Islam itself, they'll understand that it's a beautiful foundation. But we change it and we color it and we we practice it based on our culture. And culture plays a big role in the Arabic community. Islam, if, if you go back to the root of how Islam was introduced, the first word in Islam in, in, in the Quran is the word read. Our religion tells us to educate ourselves, to ask questions, to search, never to settle for information. You need to search, your brain needs to travel. And it says, learn, travel, explore, ask questions, and, and just, you know, wonder in this world, and you'd find the right answer. So we were not, in our, in our religion, we were not taught to believe what we hear. Sadly, human nature, we are like this. We, 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 are, we have been taught ever since we were born to believe what we hear and to be influenced by it. But, um, you know, if, if you go to the roots of Islam, it actually says, no, you cannot just believe things. You need to search for them. It was the first thing that God ever told us. Read, educate yourself, learn. And the word learn is there. So to us, whenever it, Muslims, whenever we hear anything, we need to search in depth about it. We can't just settle down for just hearing it or, or, or settling down for word of mouth. I mean, in our religion, it says be peaceful to every every religion, be peaceful to every ethnicity, uh, respect everyone because I'll give you an example. Let's say if someone was born in a remote jungle somewhere, okay? And let's say he ended up worshiping, let's, I'll give you an example. I don't even know if this exists. Let's say he ended up worshiping ants, okay? Ants, insects, <laughs> because he was left alone, no education. He's in the middle of, of a jungle. 
So who am I to judge a person like this that's isolated, that has no access to information? You cannot, everybody has a story. You cannot just barge in and judge people based on color, religion, race, or anything like that. So we have no right to do that. And our religion emphasizes on that and says it's a big sin to do that, to actually judge people based on what their faith, what they believe in, or what they practice. How did we get there? It's media. I mean, media makes everyone looks the way they are, and sadly, we, it brainwashes you. You in, here in the UAE, oh my God, it's all about the women. I mean, uh, our we, His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed, just assigned a minister for happiness, and she's a woman. Her job is to make sure the country is happy. She's a minister. And he, he also chose a minister of youth, and she's also a woman. We have CEOs. I'm a board member in the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and I'm a woman. But the problem is there is a lot of women leadership in the Arab world. But the problem is our voices can't reach you because there isn't a right platform where our voices can be heard and sent to the other side of the world. We are strong. We, are, we have been screaming so long, but no one is listening to us. Um, there's a lot of women movements happening here. I mean, and uh, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm very empowered by my country, by my our rulers. They are all in for women. But the thing is, no matter how much we talk or how loud we talk, if there is no platform for our voices to reach you, for example, in, in America, then it's useless. And this is how we make Islam shine, is through our achievements, through um, all the good we're doing and on all that, because there's no other way to put your voice out there. Because in the end, success is undeniable. You can say whatever you want to say about people, but you can't deny their success. And you can't deny the success of our country. And easy, I'll tell you why. Because that is a very good example about Islam. Dubai is, Islam is about being peaceful, diverse, um, interactive, educated, successful, um, growth, acceleration. You said clean roads, clean beaches. It's, this is what Islam is about. In Islam, hygiene is so important. And in Islam, if I litter my country, that's a sin because that's my ground. So Dubai doesn't feel like the Middle East because Dubai is the perfect example of Islam. And this is the perfect example of how Muslims should be. So, and, and honestly, I'm very proud of, of our leaders. I'm very proud of, of my country for making Dubai such an it city because it made people realize that this is what Islam is about. And what I love is that I have a lot of American friends who live here in Dubai and um, they always say, this is home. You know, it's funny. And for example, if somebody offends Dubai, they stand up for Dubai before we do, you know, which is funny. And then when you ask them why, they go like, this is home. So this is what Islam is about, to make people feel like they belong and not to make them feel like they don't. And when you reach Dubai, the first thing you, they tell you in the airport is welcome home. So this is our culture. This is, we're not faking it, by the way, for promotions or marketing. This is exactly how our culture and our religion is. I swear to you, this is how we should be. And if there are Muslims who are not doing that, then they should be doing that because we are very warm, we're welcoming, we're very kind, we're generous, we're helpful. It says cover up, as in cover up the hair when you are ready, cover up the hair and just let the, sh the face show. It never said what to cover it up with. Now culture picked up, like for example in Palestine, you've got the women wearing scarves only and they're like colored. This woman told me, she, in this, and I was in the States, and she told me, why do you wear black? Uh, why is your traditional wear black? Is it because women are overshadowed and you are the shadow of the man? Is this, is this like a metaphor? I was like, I laughed. <laughs> I was like, no, there's a history behind it. The reason why it's black is because back then, in the olden days, um, the only fabric available, I think, was the goat's fabric. and. They couldn't color it back then, and whenever they made it fabric, the, the fur of, of the animal, it turned out to be always dark. So the culture stuck to that, it, it stuck to that color, and it moved on and we passed it from generation to generation and all, and we can't even judge them, you know? We can't, it's not even allowed in our religion to judge them. And by the thing is, the fabrics we wear help us. And Dubai is, is not like America. You can't just, we don't, we don't do outdoors activities a lot because of the heat. And our fabric, first of all, the selection of fabric is 
this is very flowy. It's very easy. It's breezy. So it doesn't bother and it doesn't stick to your skin when it's wet, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, even even the, the abaya we wear down, it's very flowy. It doesn't, it, it actually doesn't even bother. It makes no difference to have it on, on or, or off. Now, I can easily take my abaya off, wear a nice dress, long conservative dress, and just put this over my hair. I mean, it's a choice. It's up to you how to cover up, you know, and to how to be modest. Um, as I said, culture, cho- in my culture in the UAE, we wear this. In the culture of Kuwait, they wear something else. In the culture of Palestine, they wear something else. So this is my culture on me, you know? And But I have a choice. I can wear anything I want. I can cover up my hair in a turban and go out, you know, and wear pants and a shirt. Islam is not against that, you know? We can wear, we can dress however we want to dress as long as it's modest. And uh, honest, honestly, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fashion designer who does modest wear. And I don't just cater to Muslims because I think that Modest wear is a choice of life. It's not a religion. If it's a choice of life, people choose to dress modestly, not because religion forces them to, but because they don't want to show their bodies. They don't. They don't. They don't want to show certain parts of their body. The topic that I that I speak about all the time, always time to grow healthier children. So, by the way, it's all. It all starts at home. It doesn't start in school. It all starts at home. So I always tell women, raise your boys to respect women. Uh, raise your boys to to give women their rights. Uh, raise your daughters to have a voice. Raise your daughters to have a personality, to have a choice, because they're the future generation. And maybe it's too late to change a lot of older people now, but it's never too late to start with your children. Uh, I remember Sheikh Mohammed was saying, uh, start with your kids. Tell them the position of women in society and how women are important in society. Teach your boys to be to understand their sisters and not to stop them from 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 having a voice from from having passion in life from wanting to be somebody you know right now you know what, what what's beautiful is that uh, our rulers put a lot of women uh, as ministers we have we, we have a, a girl who's the minister of youth Shamma uh, she's only I think around 21 or 22 if I'm not mistaken and her, her she's a she's a she's a minister her job is to translate the voice of the youth to the country. Highness assigned someone to be a voice for them. So what's beautiful now is if you sit and speak to young girls and you tell them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Before, we used to hear, oh, I want to be a hairstylist. Oh, I want to be um, a baker. Now, what do you want to be when you grow up? One said, I want to be a minister. One said, I want to be a pilot. So women are leaving their comfort zone and leaving that, that, thought, that, that brainwashing idea that women should belong in women's sectors women should do women things no our country is against that our country is telling us do it think outside the box be whoever you want to be and i hear it in the voices of children now and which tells me that we are getting to a safer place with our younger generation we are showing them that there is the ability to do anything and be anything you want at the moment regardless of your gender we're humans in the end we don't look at you as a boy or girl so I'll make it very fast, okay? Um, I started my business when I was 15, all right? I've been, I've been a man since I was 15 because I was providing for myself and I've been taking care of myself and I've never took a dime from my parents ever since I was 15. I've struggled uh, to put food on the table for myself and I have a son, I'm a single mom now. Um, we all are the same regardless of what religion i went through a hard time you went through a hard time she went through a hard time instead of us turning our backs to each other and just pointing fingers at religion and color and culture and and ethnicity can we just turn around turn our backs away from each other and just look each other in the eye and look deeply in the eye and we will see that we all are the same we have struggles we are women, we fight every day, we raise families, we go through hardship, we, we get hurt, we get heartbroken, naked in front of each other emotionally. We are all the same in the end. And, and honestly, I, to me, we are all equal. And I always tell women this, that women, um, we, we, uh, gender gap is something that not just the Arab world is, is going through. A gender gap and gender equality at, at work or at anything, it's happening all over the world, even in America. So we need to know that if women talk to women about women's problem, it's called gossip. We will never get anywhere. 
we need to involve a lot of men because they are part of the problem. I said part of the problem because the other part of the problem is us women. If a woman reaches to a high position in a company, she should not shut the door for other women. She should open up the door for them. Help each other, be kind to each other, support each other, you know? Kindness is becoming so scarce in the world that when I offer my help to some women, they tell me, what do you want, to, what do you want in return? Oh my God, you don't even believe kindness anymore? I don't want anything. I just, uh, to me, you, you laugh. A lot of people laugh at what I say, but my, I, I, two, two years ago, I found, no, a year ago, I found out what my passion in life is. My passion in life is not business, is not making money, is not anything. My passion in life is to help people. And that's how I go to sleep at night. So if every woman thought this way, we can make a huge impact in the world. And, and ladies, if we are, if you are passionate, if a woman is passionate, she is dangerous, you know? I mean, look at, look at women in love, what they do for their lovers when they're in love. Now apply that emotion and that passion to your work, to your career, to your business, and oh my God, you'll be so dangerous, unstoppable, you know? And just be kind to each other, be generous to each other. Don't look at labels, don't listen to what people say, you know? And I swear to God, if all women come together and join a, a united force, oh my God, it'll be, we will be unstoppable, we will be so strong. So regardless of where you are, where you're from, I know it's hard to change the world. Imagine this, you know, you've seen the population of the world. You cannot change everybody. Come on, girl, we know, wake up. You can't do that. But what you can do is start by changing yourself. Set an example and you can influence the girl sitting next to you. You can influence the girl standing next to you, in front of you. And if that contagious way of thinking, you know, spreads around, the world will definitely be a better place. And you know, my advice for women is, before you step out of your house and try to innovate in the world and your business or your career, innovate in yourself. Love yourself. Trust yourself. Be good to yourself. Before innovating anywhere outside, innovate inside here first. Innovate with yourself. And if you can fix that, you can love people, you can work better, you can start bigger businesses, better business. Innovation starts here and here, before out there. So this is my advice to all the women out there. TheVisionaryWoman.com Watch our host of insightful video exchange interviews. Listen to the Visionary Woman Hotspot Talk Radio to empower your evenings and read fascinating articles of inspiration and perseverance, all with you in mind. Visit us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.